the awareness. Oh, I think it was Master of Splits. Mom, boss lady, hello, how are you? Oh, I think it's Master of Splits. I don't have my I don't have my Discord open to send him a message. Uh, la 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 la. Hold on here. Well, we're waiting for some folks to pop on in. Let's see. Oops. Okay, I cannot type. Oh, you know what? He's not in the Discord anymore. He must have left the Discord. And he's not in any of mine. Yeah. Oh, oh, Master Splits. I was just saying you weren't in the Discord. I was, I was just getting ready to take it. I was like, gosh darn it. I know I wrote down and somebody was asking about it. And I'm like, and then I found my notes. Master of Splits, college dorm cooking stream, dorm food, rice cooker. Boom. I was just trying to tag you in the Discord, but it's like, I can't tag Master of Splits in the Discord. Oh no. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have some hopefully some pretty good food here. I did do a test of one thing. I, I'd never done it before, and I want to see if it was gonna work, and it did, and I will show you. <laughs> oh yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Oh, Master Splits, I'm so glad you said that. So glad you said that. There we go. Now. Okay, Jane, hello, good afternoon to you. How are you doing? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. We're supposed to have, I guess, more rain come this evening. We're supposed to get a couple of days break, which would be kind of nice, you know, get some chores done outside. And that would be my mama. Go to your place. Oh, okay. Yeah, mom. Yeah, I saw, I saw when, when uh, the account logged in. I saw, I saw the, the name. So it's like, ah, I know it's you. Becky, hello. How are you? Welcome on in. It is so good to see you guys. Thanks for popping in. I think, so my plan is, you know, best laid in, best, what, what is it? Best plans, best laid in, how, what's that phrase about best laid intentions? Since this is college dorm party, here's a six pack of cheers. <gasps> cheers. Wait a minute, no, wait a minute. Master of Splits, come on. Shouldn't that be a keg? <laughs> Shouldn't that be a keg instead of six, instead of the six bottles of beer? We need a keg emote. I mean, I don't, I don't drink that much beer, but I'm saying if somebody needs to do a keg emote, my glasses are just filthy, 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 filthy. Ugh. Okay. Let's get rid of, it's, it's weird not having pots and pans. Usually I have like my pots and pans out. I do need a bowl for the dessert. We will do, we'll do this bowl for the dessert, one of the desserts. So my goal is to do two different breakfasts, one in the microwave, one in the rice cooker, two different lunch or dinner recipes, one in the microwave, one in the rice cooker, two desserts, one in the microwave, one in the rice cooker. They can all be kind of interchanged, but there might just be a little bit different instructions on there. I'm doing really, I'm doing really good. I'm also really excited, guys. So I can't, I can't show you that. I have to keep pulling this up so you guys can't see it, but I'm wearing the shirt. We're gonna reveal December schedule. Remember I told you guys it, it has nothing to do with traditional Christmas. I am not a traditional Christmas kind of gal. I was when our daughter was little. You know, you did the Christmas tree and the, my nose is running. You do the Christmas tree and, and the and the stockings and all the you know the fall to roll and whatnot. And I just gotta make sure I had a uh, I'll just leave that over there to dab with. And but I don't I don't, I don't even decorate the house now. Well, I we used to put the lights up on the outside of the house, but now that I'm living out in the rural countryside, nobody's gonna see them. So yeah, this is gonna be I'm a college student with five hundred thousand. Oh my gosh, a whole keg of beer. You can, can you afford a holy mote of beer? <laughs> Just a holy mote of beer. I do not drink alcoholic beer. Been sober since, wait, uh, been sober since the end of this year. Wow. 
Mom boss lady, you guys, let's give up that hype right there. 15 years, milestone, dedication. Wow, that is seriously cool. That is seriously cool. Mary Banks, hello, how are you today? Happy Sunday. Yeah, that is impressive. That is impressive. There was another um, gentleman I met through stream or whatever, and he was five years sober, sober, previous drug addict, and really talks about his, you know, his his journey because pe oh, don't do that again, because you know he you know because people can learn from it, and I think that I think that's wonderful when people can can share that. And he said he couldn't share it in the beginning because it was too difficult to talk about and started sharing it, you know, afterwards and said that it became even more helpful to his strength and fortitude to actually talk about it. So I think that's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I wasn't even a student, so I'm looking forward to this. This can be done not necessarily if you're a student, right? So we could do this. Uh, some people live a very minimal a life. Maybe they live in a small apartment that doesn't have a, a kitchen. Maybe it has a little two burner stove. Maybe that stove doesn't work. There's other avenues of cooking and a lot of people discount. Now, granted, I, I, I will admit, hand up, my hand is up right here. I don't cook in my microwave. I reheat leftovers in my microwave. I will sometimes um, um, like melt butter or stuff like that. No, mom, you're going to have to refresh. Yeah, you'll, you'll just have to refresh. I'm gonna turn this Wi-Fi off on my phone too. Hopefully she heard me. I know. You guys ready for the shirt? You guys ready for the shirt? Uh, hang on, I, I'm sorry guys, my mom is having a hard time. I don't know if she can hear me. You uh, need to refresh. Are you guys ready for the shirt? So what we're going to do in the month of December, uh, there we go. Okay, wait, I just gotta get that thing up there so I can make sure I'm, I'm doing this. So what we're doing in the month of December is I love true crime. My daughter got me hooked on it. Now keep in mind, my dad worked for the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department for 32 years, worked the homicide department work burglary, walk the beat. My husband was a California Highway Patrol officer. Now he didn't necessarily deal, deal in true crime. Oh, well, I mean, it is a crime if it's like a hit and run, but he dealt more with like the traffic citations and that type of thing, pursuits and whatnot. But you know, my dad had the whole, the whole, had the whole background on there. So dude, loves, I love true crime. Absolutely love true crime. Oh, that's a relaxing day, Mary Banks, when you can sit there and just let the creativity go like that. I love that, I love that. So what we're going to do in the month of December is going to be all about true crime. We're going to co cover a couple of high profile serial killers. Now these serial killers have, unfortunately, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. Or don't do the crime if you can't do the time type of thing. We're going to talk about their last meals and why they chose those last meals. And we're going to recreate those last meals. We're going to talk about some crimes that happened in passion. We're going to talk about some other types of things. But just so you know, the whole thing about true crime is we're going ho-ho homicide, people. It's all going to be about What's happening? Woohoo! Party! Hello, Mr. Design Cooks. How are you? So everything is going to be food-related crimes. Food-related crimes. So yes, we are doing ho ho homicide! Exclamation point merch. This is only available till the end of December. December thirty-first. This shirt goes away. This shirt goes away. So ho ho homicide is officially live. The shirt was designed by, I don't know, I don't know if Dade's here yet. Dade designed, Dade designed the logo. You know, I'll try and get a little bit closer. You're gonna see the ho-ho homicide. I have it in t-shirts, two different colors, like the forest green and the gray. I also have it in sweatshirts if you guys wanna get a sweatshirt. And I think I have it in a long sleeve uh, shirt as well on there. So exclamation point merch, that should do the, that should put that in there. Boom, there it is right there. So it's only live until December 31st. This is an exclusive, Canara stream only. 
But with the true crime thing, we're going to look at a lot of different, thank you, Mom Boss Lady. We're going to look at a lot of different, and I don't have them priced real expensive. Lovely for the extended family dinner. <laughs> I love that. Holy cow! Chef Vegan! Oh, I, I just want I just that song to keep playing. Can we get a huge shout out for Chef Nagin, please? Oh my gosh, guys. Love this woman. Love her energy. Raid is up in the house. And Raiders, for those of you who just came in, first of all, my name is Kanara. Hello. And I'm a food and drink streamer. Ta-da. Today, we're announcing our December stream. So our December stream is all going to be about true crime. And we released the shirt today. Ho, ho, homicide. So this is exclamation point merch. The shirt's only going to be available to December 31st, and then it goes away. And this is going to be a fun, fun thing. How did your waffles come out? And did you make a hash brown waffle? Please don't disappoint me. Please don't disappoint me. Did you make a hash brown waffle? Or do one with, with brownie mix? Oh, my gosh, those were so good. Raiders, Raiders, Lurker Raiders, just listen up real quick if you can do me a huge favor. Right down there is my logo. If you click that logo, that puts you directly into my stream, takes out the little raid URL. That helps my numbers out for later on. Later on. Oh, DJ Skids, thank you so much for the resub 10 months. The Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Ah, uh, hello, Negan sent me. Nikos, welcome on in. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Yes, Becca made it in the basement. Please don't put, nobody puts Becca in the basement. Nobody. Nobody puts Becca in the basement. <laughs> oh, I love your face more, girl. Oh my gosh. Thank you so, so very much for bringing your family over here. You guys, my family, if you're not following Chef Nagin, please click on her link. Please go over and follow her. Mango X, nice to see you here. How are you today? How's everybody doing from Nagin's stream? I know you guys went over there. You guys are probably all full. You guys had a really good brunch. So, oh, Atomic Widget, thank you. So remember, if you or a loved one are a victim of the freshman 15 poundage gain, that's what we're talking about today. We are going to step out of the traditional cooking method because people in dorm rooms or small living don't necessarily have a stove and everything to cook on. So we're gonna do everything today in a rice cooker or the microwave. Everything's gonna be done. I'm gonna show you guys how we can eat something kind of kind of a little healthier and packed with flavor. Pack, we're making curry. We're making curry. Curry. Mm-hmm. Ah, that sounds real good. One of the things I want to get you guys away from, for, for those in college, even if you're not in college, but you're wanting to learn to cook in different ways, maybe you live in, in, small, in a small um, apartment or whatever, please stop cooking these. I only keep this for an example. This thing's probably as hard as a rock. Please stop cooking these. This has no nutrition value whatsoever. Matter of fact, let's look, let's look at the nutrition label, shall we? This, is, this serves two, two, yeah, you heard that right, two people. You're supposed to serve two. You're not supposed to eat the whole packet, but yet they only give you one packet of seasoning, but you're supposed to do this, it's supposed to be for two people, okay? Ruin my childhood. <laughs> yes, so servings per container, two. So you're supposed to take that biscuit and break it in half. Yeah, this is a, read about the Lawrence Brewer's last meal. Oh, send me, a, send me a message, Master of Splits. Send me a message. Oh my God, I used to eat two packs at a time. So let me tell you about it. So if you eat this whole package, this, this whole package, which come on, that's what we all do. We all put this into boiling water. We all let it boil for three minutes. We put our little packet in there and we eat it right out of the pan, right? That's what we all do. If you eat this whole package, you are getting 14 grams of fat. That's a lot of fat, folks. And that's not even good fat, like from an avocado. That's, okay, you're getting 14 grams of fat. How much uh, sodium are you getting? 1,760 milligrams of sodium, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, that's when your blood pressure spikes through the roof, your ears begin ringing for no apparent reason, and things are a little fuzzy on the outside of your peripheral vision because you ate all that, you ate all that sodium in there. I meant that as a joke, no way you're going to make that. Oh, wait, what was it? My apologies for posting in the wrong room, but I have dared posting pictures of my comic sheet. We have, the, we have like the other picture section that you can post your artwork and stuff in, uh, Mary. We love to see that kind of stuff. We love to see that kind of stuff. Uh, so let's see. Vitamin D, nothing. Calcium, nothing. Iron, 1.3 milligrams of iron. 
and 100 milligrams of potassium. That's coming from the sodium that's inside here. So this offers no nutrition value whatsoever. Now, these are not weighed. So are you ready for this? Oh, wait, hang on. Can't read that one on there. So let, lots of MSG. Dude, so thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate that very much. You have a seat at the infinity table. Unlimited seating. Anybody who hits that follow button, my goodness gracious, you even get to pick out your own chair. Custom chair, you can have whatever you want. Crocs has a bean bag. Dade has a recliner chair. So we have canola oil, cottonseed oil, palm oil, preserved by TBHQ, tuberculosis headquarters. I don't know. I, I have no idea what that is. Uh, MSG, we have some soy sauce in there. Anyway, this has 90% of this you can't even pronounce. This isn't, this isn't food. This isn't food. It's filler. It's filler. But we'll keep it for, we'll keep it for an example. We, we keep that one for example. So if you're going to do, hang on here real quick. Let me see. So this is, these are the noodles that I buy. These are the ramen, these are the ramen noodles, the whole wheat ramen noodles that I buy. They come in individual little brick. It's rain and ramen, hallelujah, it's rain and ramen. Okay, so anyway, come a little individual bricks, which is kind of nice. Only 1.5 grams of fat for, for your brick on there. Only 23 carbs, does contain two fiber, and we're gonna talk about fiber. Fiber is extremely important. Fiber just isn't for old people. Fiber is for every single one of you. We do have some calcium in here. We do have a little bit more in the potassium type thing. I buy these at Costco. And they cook up just like the instant ramen things. But now I'm going to take this and I'm going to add some fresh vegetables. I'm going to add my own chicken stock or I'm going to add uh, a hard-boiled egg or something like that. So you can make them much healthier, much, much healthier. Uh, thanks. Nice to be here. Well, it's nice to have you here, dudes, and nice to have you here. Uh, I've never seen those. Yes, they are whole wheat. They are the whole wheat ramen noodles. Is this just a ramen stream? No. Matter of fact, I'm not making ramen today. I just want to talk about it because when people think dorm room food and they think, you know, cheap eats or whatever, they go to those ramen packets. We're not doing ramen today. Anybody can do, well, do legitimate ramen is going to take you hours to do because you've got to make all these different components and you have all these components, you can start making ramen. But no, we're not going to do that. What are your thoughts on MSG? Everything in moderation, uh, Becky, everything in moderation. Um, MSG can be overdone. I always say if something calls for a teaspoon of MSG, I'll do maybe... I'll start with a quarter teaspoon and we'll see how it tastes. But for those on blood pressure medication or who already have elevated blood pressure, MSG is out. It is off the table. Even if you're taking medication, it is off the table. We don't want to do that. In moderation, yes, everything, everything in moderation. People, I don't, I don't believe that anything should be like, I mean, other than food allergies, right? My gosh, that ramen went everywhere. Holy Toledo. It really was raining ramen. Ramen sticks here, ramen sticks there, here stick, there stick, everywhere stick, stick. Um, but yeah, everything, everything in moderate is the reason Texas ended the last meal request. Oh my gosh, what did he order? Like lobsters and stuff like that? Second one's been, oh, work on those today. Okay, I'll go back and check those out. Mish Mish, can we get a shout out for Mish Mish? Oh my gosh, Mish Mish. I was close today, man. I was close today. How are you? Dade, Dade is here. Dade, guys, Dade is the one who did the Ho Ho Homicide logo. So please don't forget, exclamation point merch. If you want these for Christmas time, let me tell you, people who are true crime, if you have family or friends who are into true crime, this right here, this right here. <laughs> he did, he did such a good job on this. He did such a good job on this. Thank you for that shout out for Mish Mish. Mish Mish, is, I just absolutely love her. I mean, I, there are so many people in this food and drink community that I generally feel affection for and so amazing I know right we did we did the reveal I had I had the apron pulled up first over my neck so they couldn't see and then we did the reveal of the ho ho homicide what what I've got to pull up the it's on my other computer I'm sorry I was gonna pull up the docs I will have my December schedule up I hope I hope by the end of this week I'm doing some more research on a couple of recipes and I'm not streaming I'm only streaming from the beginning, I'm doing you know Wednesdays and Sundays, but I leave on 
the 21st of December, and I won't be back until the 29th or 30th of December. So this is why we're going on this early. Vantage, hello, how are you doing, my dear? What didn't he order? He ordered a whole smorgasbord and never took one bite. Master Splits, that is not uncommon. I have a list of at least seven other uh, death row inmates. And by the way, these people are really horrible people. I mean, really horrible people. My thought is they, they don't deserve a last meal, but okay, that's what they, that was the thing that was decided. But they did the same thing. They did the same thing. They would order an entire meal or some of them would order a meal along with a dessert and they would leave the dessert because they really thought they were going to come back later and eat it later. Oh, did you see that? Kim, thank you so much for that resub. I appreciate that so much. How are you feeling? How are you doing? How, how, how things happening? How things happening? Resub hype. Swirly. Hello, Swirly. Are we ready for drum night? I've got my, I got my air sticks ready, girl. I've got my air sticks ready. Yogomi does his drumming stream, and usually Yogomi is starting right as I'm ending mine. So it's a perfect way to end my stream. Get some dishes done real quick and then sit down for drum night and gummy bears. <laughs> Jeffrey, hello, Jeffrey. Nice to see you. Welcome on in. Welcome on in. My nose is just running, run like a sieve. So let's get, let's get, so we're going to do, first we're going to do two breakfasts, okay? So I'm going to teach you guys how to do oatmeal in a rice cooker, which is the simplest thing to do. And then we're going to do a veggie cheese egg in a mug in the microwave. Going to be some good stuff. I wonder what happened to all those lost desserts. Oh, I know the ho-ho homicide. I can't wait to post this on the, on the Discord and everything on there. I think it's going to be a lot, of, a lot of fun. Prison guards probably had a fantastic treat, right? They're sitting there going, he ain't going to eat all that. Yeah, we're eating good tonight. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Currently crummy. No, I feel a sinus infection coming on. Hot lemon tea and broth. Chevy dude, thank you for that follow. I appreciate that very, very much. So where are all the new followers following from? I'd love to know where, I mean... I don't need your exact address, but if you're in the United States, what state are you following from? If you're in a different country, what country are you following from? Love to know that. You have to have to give me the deets. I was sitting there thinking, so uh, Kim, do you do, I do like hot water, lemon juice, a little bit of honey if I have like a sore throat, and cayenne, just a pinch of cayenne pepper. And you'll have to keep kind of like stirring it because the cayenne wants to float on the, stop, on the top, but that gets the sinuses running and clears all that clears all that out. USA. I'm from Oregon. So I mean, I, right now we have sunshine. Then the rain, will, the rain will be back. The rain will be back. Spicy. Oh, I love the spicy. So let's get our rice going. So this now, if you do this with instant oats, your cooking time is going to be much less. I'm using Quaker old fashioned oats. Uh, the recipe calls for a cup. I'm only using a half a cup. Oh, did I, oh, this is a new one. Wait, I thought I had one in here that's open. No, I don't. I must have finished that one. Well, all right. These have been in the freezer already. I freeze all of my grains, oats, beans. Everything goes in the freezer for seven days before I, I put it into the pantry over here. I have a nut job. I like ghost chill. Oh, yeah, those are just crazy. If I have a sore throat, I boil some water and make myself some strong, thick elderberry. Yes, that's elderberry is great stuff. But for those who are into canning, please realize you cannot, you cannot can elderberries anymore. Elder, that's a big no-no. You can freeze them. All right, so we're going to do a half a cup of oats right into your rice cooker. This is going to cook for a while. While this is cooking, we'll work on our egg one. Did you get this at Costco? That container is huge. No, this is in my grocery store. This is the uh, Costco. I can buy it in a big, in like a big bag. Like I can buy it like in, in one of those bags like this with a handle on it. But this is this. Richard. <laughs> Richard coming in with the bird calls from the bird bear. How are you, my dear? All right. So th I'm not doing one. I'm not doing. Um, so let's talk about the rice cooker. So the rice cooker I am using, this is like a little, what's called a mini rice cooker. So if you're in a dorm or you have, you know, kids who are in a dorm, check with the dorm policies. Having things that are not allowed can result in expulsion from the dorms and whatever. But the one nice thing about rice cookers is they have this little, this little weighted tab. 
And when this is filled with food, water, or whatever, it pushes this tab down. And that starts the heating process. If this were to get knocked over, maybe there's a party going on, maybe there's a, a rousing game of beer pong going on over there, and they knock this over and this falls on its side, yes, it's going to make a mess because the contents are going to spill, but the heating element is no, is no longer going to be in heating. It will stay on warm so long as it's plugged in. So when the rice gets done or the food gets, oh, did that drop on the ground? No, it didn't. And the food gets done, that little tab pops up and it just keeps your food warm. I recommend turning it off right away. I think it's too warm on the warming cycle. I'm doing very good. Thank you very, very much. It's been a, it's been a lovely Sunday thus far. We got a lot of work done. I'm kind of like redoing my office a little bit. So give me some, when you're doing research and it's like, you gotta stay focused, you gotta have a good environment. But that's also the spare bedroom when Laura comes up and that's the real reason why we're doing it. <laughs> it's good. Uh, you can get the sweetened juice right from the shelves in the Danish supermarket. Oh, what sweetened stuff are we talking about? What, what sweetened stuff are we talking about? I love, so here's the interesting part is a lot of people think that steel cut oats are healthier. They're not. An oat is an oat is an oat. It's just cut in a different way. So the, these, are, these are called rolled oats. So what happens is the oat, oh, I wish I had some whole oats here. I could have shown you guys that. These are, they go through a roller and they get rolled out very, very flat. The steel cut oat takes the oat and cuts it in half and they don't get, they don't get rolled and, and squished. They take a lot longer to cook then than these oats do right here. Copland, but now that I'm used to using a rice cooker, I can't cook. So that's what's, okay, so Copland, here's what's really, oh, the sweetened elderberry juice, yes. This is just a normal rice cooker. It has on and off, and that's it. So, oops. So when I get ready to put it, I will push this little tab down, it comes on. Bigger rice cookers, nicer rice cookers have different settings. Some of them have a lid that completely closes over, so you will have to read your instructions for T you know, timing and, and control and, and heat control. This one's just on and off. It's that simple. But what's funny, Copland, is I was just talking about this to somebody. I used to cook rice exclusively in this rice cooker. Matter of fact, cook so much rice, I burnt the first one up and had to buy a second one. Once I learned how to do it on the stove the right way, I've never used this for rice again. I use it for everything else, but I've never used it for rice again. I love oats. I miss it. I love, uh, oats are the are one of the few things that I really, really like. Can I post a link to show how the bottles look? Or is that? Uh, Mary Banks, if you want to send it to me when I get done, when I get done with stream, but if you put, if it's got like pictures and stuff like that, we have like the other pictures and stuff. If you're, if you're doing that for like the photos, uh, you can probably post it in there, it should be fine. It's like saying sirloin steak is healthy if you slice it into strip instead of chunks. Yes, that, <laughs> I never knew, oh my gosh, we are gonna make oats in here, we are going to make curry in here, and we're gonna make, oh wait, I think, I'm, I think the two desserts are both microwave. Yeah, I think both desserts, and I forgot to pick some up, but I was gonna show you guys how to cook a cookie inside the, inside the rice cooker, I forgot to pick up the cookie dough. So what's the weirdest things you guys ate when in college? Ooh, that's a good question. I'll be curious to see those answers. Okay, so let me get, I'm gonna need to get, uh, that's a half a cup, Plus a quarter. I need to get three quarters cup of water in here. Now to this, and I'm starting with cold water. I'm not starting with warm water. One, two, three, and a pinch to grow on. I'm starting. I'm starting with cold water. We're gonna give this a little shake up, so you can kind of see the water too. Oops. Oops. You can kind of see the there. You know, we got our water in there. We got our oats in there. If you are somebody who's on a time constraint. One, oats are cheap, right? Oats, are, oats aren't expensive, but they're very hearty. And this is where I talk about fiber, and I wanna show you guys something else as well, is fiber is not just about, everybody thinks, oh, the old people need the fiber, it's why they gotta eat their prunes and stuff like that. And um, in some cases, that is true, and that's usually 99% due to medication that they're on, which causes that but everybody needs more fiber. You should be eating at least 25, minimum of 25 grams of fiber a day. If you write down what you're eating and write down the total grams of fiber you guys are having a day, I guarantee most of you are probably coming in around eight, maybe 10 at the max, if, especially if you're not a big vegetable eater. So adding fiber to your diet does two things. One, helps with your digestive tract, we all know that. But two, eating fiber makes you feel fuller, longer, 
which avoids you going back and going, man, I'm starving, you know, 15 minutes after you had breakfast or 30 minutes after you had breakfast, you're off to class. And instead of grabbing like a healthy granola bar, which also has high fats, or grabbing that bag of potato chips, eating stuff with added fiber into it makes it more hearty for you. This is the stuff that I like. This is called Benefiber. This also has the probiotic in it. And so I will be adding, I will be adding two teaspoons to this. Three teaspoons is a serving, but there's already some, there's already some uh, fiber in the oats themselves. This dissolves completely. There is no flavor, there's no odor. You can put this in your coffee. You can, I've done that. You can put this in a glass of water, let it stir and let it sit for 30 seconds to a minute. It'll, it'll dissolve completely clear and you'll never even see it. Never again, don't like it. But I don't know, is coffee good for you? I only drink it black. Again, moderation, everything in moderation. I have one cup of coffee in the morning. Oh, Rusty Rhymes, can we get a shout out for Rusty Rhymes, please? Rusty Rhymes, thank you so much for that resub. I appreciate that. I'm sorry, I kind of had to, I, I dipped out before, before the end of the stream. I do, I do apologize for that very much. I do apologize for that. Um, had to get some stuff ready, had to take care of a, of a slight issue. So when this, is, when this is plugged in, what happens is this does not go by time. These, these small little rice cookers here, they do not go by time. You know, it's just on or it's off. So what happens is when you put your food inside here, it weighs the bowl down and depresses that tab. The timer is when the food, when the water and the liquid has evaporated, when it comes to rice and oats, when the water has evaporated, it weighs less. Therefore, the food is done and the timer pops up. So for me, I've got, I've got to... I'll be plugging this in and unplugging this a lot today. So we're just going to get that going. Now, one thing I didn't add to this that we're going to add to this, I'm going to add a pinch of salt. Not a lot. Actually, actually, no, I'm not, because I'm going to use some salted butter in there. I don't add milk to my oatmeal. Feel free to add milk to your oatmeal if you want to. I eat my oatmeal just as it is, so we're going to let this cook and we're gonna add some fresh apples, uh, diced apples to the top. I have some toasted mixed nuts that I already have here. You can toast these in your rice cooker. Now, when it comes time to doing saute things of like onions, garlic, you may have to hold this down because it's not enough weight of a little bit of garlic and onion in there to keep that tab pushed down. So you may have to hold this down and I'd recommend wearing a hot pack because this does get warm. And you can actually saute your eggs, I mean, saute your stuff in this. So it works really, really well. Pop Candy, hello, how are you doing? How are you doing? Oh, so many nice people here today. I used to, I used to meal prep my breakfast and use, ooh, that would be good. And that'd give, you, that'd give you a nice kick. If you don't have time to, so these technically are gonna cook. Now that if you have the fancy rice setting, it would, um, it's a set for a porridge option or to, to white rice and check it after about 20 minutes. So we'll, we'll check that here in about 20 minutes. That's why I'm hoping we have time to do everything because some of these take a little bit in here to cook. We may come back and forth to, to different dishes. You, we can add a little bit of honey to this. You know, let's put a little bit of cinnamon in here, right? Because we are having some apples. Letting that cinnamon cook is going to add more flavor throughout. Whoa. So let's add a little bit of cinnamon in here. Hey, Copland, thank you for that follow. I appreciate that very much. Now we can do sugar, we can do brown sugar, we can do honey. Personally, I'm gonna do agave. So I like, the, I like the flavor of agave. Also, the nice thing about agave, agave is lower on the glycemic index. Remember, we were talking about adding fiber keeps us fuller, so we're not snacking on that snack food. Having lower sugar, you don't get that sugar crash. It's Gus, hello, welcome on in. Twitch, how are you doing? Gosh, Twitch is here. Oh, hi, <laughs> how are you doing? T Gomez, welcome on in, nice to see you guys. It is so nice to see you all. This is absolutely a, a, a lovely, lovely, a lovely, lovely group here. Oops, I forgot to go back over to my OBS. Oh, there we go, hey, there's me. This way if I have to show you guys something. So we're gonna add probably the agave at the end. We'll add that in. We'll add the agave at the end, add that in. That made a lot of sense, did, didn't it? So that's going to cook up. And I'm going to get a... There are, these are non-stick. 
Mm, that's, I don't want to need a big one. Most all your rice cookers are nonstick. So remember, don't use a metal spoon in them. But the reason why I'm not gonna add salt is normally I would add a little bit of salt because of the sweetness of the apples and it lifts the flavor from the flat oatmeal. But I'm gonna add some butter, some salted butter. I don't do cream in mine, I don't do milk in mine, but a little bit of butter, oh, it just adds everything. It just, and you, it's just a little tiny knob of butter. You don't need a whole lot. You don't need a whole lot. Twitchbird, nice to meet you, nice to meet you too. Thanks for coming in, I appreciate that. Jane is here. Jane is one of my volunteers with Oregon State University. Uh, so the Raiders, if you guys don't know that, I work for Oregon State University. I am a food safety and preservation specialist with OSU, and I teach classes on food, all methods of food preservation, emergency prep. So I know I've got sticky hands. Are you off for your jog, sir? He is off for his jogs, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to go get healthy. He's going. By the way, Kanara, my driver is racing again, so you might have to. Oh, okay. So. To the driver of Becky, go forth, be safe, high bank on those curves. Remember, high late entry, late low apex, win. There we go. I don't know if that's up. Jane Henry, can we get a shout out for Jane Henry? The lady knows her stuff when it comes to ask her all things. Oh gosh, Jane, from your lips to some other people's ears. I've been, I've been getting, I've been getting information that there's, that there's several who are out there going to be doing canning streams. Which is great. I, I love the idea that they're doing canning streams, that they want to show preservation, but none of them have ever taken a canning class. And I just want to make sure that their recipes are safe. I'm like, J look, just send me your recipe. Just tell me what recipe you're using. I'll tell you if that's safe or unsafe. That's all I want you to do. Just send it, and then go forth and can. So, Lady Arana, Arath Arathrina, Arath wait, am I pronouncing that right? Have you ever worked on MR? No, but here's what's interesting, Copland. I freeze dry a lot of food. I have a year's supply of freeze dried foods. I have my own freeze dryer. And so I make my own MREs based on foods that we like to eat. So I have an entire Thanksgiving dinner freeze dried. So if the zombie apocalypse happens, cause you know, it's not gonna be an earthquake and it's not gonna be a meteor and we all know it's gonna be zombies. But anyway, when the zombies attack, I can have Thanksgiving dinner. Go forth and can. I've considered doing can again, but I've never done it on stream. How long? That, oh, so that's a good question. That's a good question. Hang on, did we not get, oh, DJ already did that. Thank you. Yo, we're going to Canary. Yes, everybody come on over. Everybody come on over. We'll, we'll just take care of everything. So home canned foods will last pretty much indefinitely. So long as the tab is down, that little, <laughs> the lid is on there firm. I mean, you can't just lift the lid off. I mean, you have to actually pop it off. You'll hear air go on the inside of it but it's best used within three years, two to three years, because that's your best nutrient value. But you can still eat it. I've, I've had tuna that I've eaten four years after I've canned it, five years after I've canned it, and it's fantastic because it, had, it got pushed in the back and I had to actually use that. Uh, what are you cooking today? So today we're doing dorm room cooking. If you or a loved one were a victim of the freshman 15 of gaining all that extra weight from eating fast food and things that weren't healthy for you, you're in the right place. So right now we're doing a breakfast. This is already starting to simmer. This is already starting to simmer. So this is our, this is our rice cooker oatmeal. So you can cook in a rice cooker. And so now we're gonna do, now we're gonna do an egg, and a, we're gonna make like a mini omelet in a mug, okay? I think that's gonna be, let's add, oh, and I wanna show you guys these. We got some bacon bits. Do you guys, okay, do you guys want me to do a real egg or do you guys want me to use imitation egg? The reason why I ask this is, Living in a dorm room, you have limited shelf space, right? Because you might probably have a small little fridge. You may or not, you may or may not have room for eggs, and eggs only last a limited time. Whereas eggs that have been pasteurized that are in the cartons, they last longer. So if you're cooking on a budget, you might want to get a carton of eggs. Real egg, okay. All right, there we go. I'm going for real eggs. I don't know if I'm using two or if I'm using one in this recipe. We're gonna find out. I'll get out two, just to be safe. Just to be safe. Something over there growled at me and I'm, so, mug. So the, we're gonna cut up some, oh, do you guys know that you can make hard boiled eggs in your rice cooker? This is a hard boiled egg I did in the rice cooker. Take your eggs out, put them in your rice cooker, cover them with cold water, and let them set there for about 30 minutes before you plug it in. That's gonna acclimate the egg to the water. We're not gonna drop this into boiling water. And then you're gonna turn your rice cooker on. You're gonna let it go for 30 minutes. And I wanna show you guys, here's my, this is the egg I did. 
I did two eggs. So this is the hard boiled egg from, that cinnamon smells so good. That's the hard boiled egg from doing it in the rice cooker. So you can make yourself six eggs ahead of time and then keep them in your fridge. Great protein snack. If you have to make that pack of ramen we talked about earlier, now you have an egg you can put right on top and some fresh veggies. Fun fact. Hey, Tia, hello. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tia. Happy birthday to you and many more. <laughs> oh, I hope you are having a lovely day. All right, so let's get out. All right. This can have anything you want in it. This is totally up to you. Totally, oh, totally. I just realized I sang that entire song and I was on the little screen. Jeez Louise. Is it on my birthday? I like to sing to everybody on their birthdays. I think birthdays are, birthdays are, well, everybody else's birthday is special. Mine, eh, you know. You get to a certain age, you're like, eh, whatever. <laughs> so this, I just cut the top off. And now it's going to sit over there. I'll use that for something maybe later for lunch. I'm just going to use the top for my triple dances in the house. How are you, my dear? My day is full of chocolate. Oh, we saw you. Oh, good. Okay. I posted my death row book. Oh, Dune, am I going to have to order this on Amazon today? <laughs> what happened to, uh, to the Say a Recipe channel? Oh, wait. What do you mean? Tell me. Talk to me. What are we talking about here? Which one? Suggest a poll. You mean tell me like Julia or was there a, was there a specific one? I'm doing well, Kanar. I think, I think everybody's here ready to eat. I think we are all ready to eat. A whole week before my actual brother, like my brother did all. Oh wait, look up, Kanara. What, Richard? I see my lights. Oh, I forgot to turn on this light though. There we go. I see my lights, Richard. Oh, the Redeemer recipe. I took that one off for now because it really wasn't being used. Fresh eggs can be kept for three to five weeks. Some can, but some of the ones that have been like the fresh eggs actually last longer than commercial eggs because commercial eggs have been washed and dipped and they lose all that good bacteria. Ooh, this is starting to go. This is starting to go. Did you mean scroll up? Emily dropping some knowledge right there. Boom. Emily dropping some knowledge right there. But if, if somebody has a recipe, so I do have recipe suggestions in the Discord, exclamation point Discord. We're just going to cut up some, I like to have peppers. So we're going to have a little bit of, we're going to have a few peppers in this dish. We're going to have a couple of onions in here. Oats, like all grains, love to foam up. That's the protein. Rice does this. Rice won't do it as much if you rinse it the way you're supposed to. You should really rinse your your white rice really well. Now, if you're doing sushi rice or something like that, then no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't rinse that as well. Okay, oh, we need a slice of bread. Oh, so this is gonna be almost like a bread pudding. I like this. Well, whole grain white bread. And you guys might think, this is not Wonder Bread. I mean, it, it, it's not Wonder Bread. That's whole wheat bread, guys, kind of, it's like, wait, what? No, that's not. Yes, it is. You want to know the neat thing about this? Per slice, one slice. Where's it at? I'm trying to find it. Oh, I can't read. One slice on here has two fibers in it right there. My bread that I have has, I think it's three fibers each slice. So for a sandwich, I get, I get six grams of, I get six grams of fiber. Okay, so we have, we're gonna slice our bread into cool, and we're only gonna use one of those, a little bit of milk, handful of uh, fresh spinach. Ooh, I got some spinach. I got some spinach in here. Okay, so this just clicked. This just clicked, so I am gonna, we're gonna check this. Let's, this is definitely done. So what I am going to do is I'm going to unplug this. I don't want that to keep warm, so I am going to unplug this. We're gonna put this into a little bowl. 
I want you guys to see the consistency of this. You can see that didn't take long. The time this took to cook, you're in taking a shower, getting dressed, you come out, and boom, you have. Do you guys want apple or banana on this? I can do either or. I happen to have a banana, and I happen to have an apple. I redeem suggest a poll. Oh, okay, so uh, let, one of my, let one of my mods know uh, what the poll is. Now this will, this rice, I mean rice, um, oatmeal, it, 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 will stick, it will stick to the bottom. So if you get that into a sink, with, or just pour a little bit of water in it, it will undo itself. You can just let it soak while you're at school, while you're doing classes or whatever, and you're fine on that. Let's move all this over here for this stuff. What do we decide? Are we going to do? I can hear that. Yeah. Now, in if you're doing rice, save that. It's really good in soups. Really good in soups. So we got our. So did we decide apple? So we're going with apple. I got you, I saw it. Oh, thank you so much, Dade. Can our a stream video do viewers? Food recipe only stream. Uh, more details. Give me the details, uh, Sam. I'm kind of curious now. Oh no, how did Atomic Widget get banned? No, what happened? Oh, because, oh, because we only do the English here. Mmm, bread. Yes, we only, yeah, I only speak English here and um, because I can other languages, because we don't speak other languages, we don't know what's always being said. Sometimes things are, so, sometimes things are said that we find out later were not so nice. It's like, oh dear, oh dear. Let's move these over. Well, now you never know. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Aspie, oh my gosh, Aspie, you are cracking me up. You are cracking me up. You did that once before to somebody. I'm trying to remember who it was. I'm just going to wrap this other half up because we're not going to use this half. These are Fuji apples. Fuji apples are the sweetest of the apples. What do I have to do with the poll? Oh, you just need to uh, let, send your, send your poll suggestion like over to, uh, date or whatever and they will they will set the poll up for you thank you for that following cats how are you today happy sunday okay why are you not cutting jeepers creepers oh i know i say the word amazing a lot now if i say that word you can do exclamation point amazing and it will count the word and we'll see how many times i say amazing over the course of a of a year but if I don't say it, I mean, don't, don't just type it in there. Don't just type it in there. <laughs> I can assist with, oh, that's right, DJ. What is the best cake you've ever had? Do you want to give them like a choice? So, apples, high fiber, excellent way to also sweeten. Notice I didn't do a whole lot of the agave syrup in there. We're just going to put in some diced apples. We're going to add in some, some nuts. Oh, let me get my little bit of butter. Well, that's still kind of warm. I want to put some butter in here. If you want to speed up the process of cooking your oats, put them in the refrigerator in a, put them in the refrigerator in like a mason jar or a bowl with the same amount of water you would normally cook them with. And that will soften them up overnight and they won't take as long to cook. Probably should be using a spoon for this. That would make so much more sense, but why? Like I said, I don't do cream. If you want to add a little bit of milk to this, you could. We're going to put some apples inside there. I won't just eat these apples. I'm not a fan of apples. I'm not a fan of apples. The viewers request receptacles in Discord and you choose some. Oh, we just had a mystery box stream. Did you miss the mystery box stream? I had to cook with cod. What all were the ingredients? Cod, tarragon, purple potatoes, 
Corona beer, bananas, yogurt, leeks, and we made it, we made an entire dish out of out of that. And I gotta say, it came out pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. Hey, it's Tommy Guns. Tommy, wait, Tommy. Tommy, where do I know you from? Tommy, are you? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say, I don't like to say people's real names. Like a chopped episode. Becca Jack. <laughs> oh, you came over from the, you came over from the big party house. All right. All right. So there you go, guys. This is one of the healthiest dishes for breakfast. Packed with fiber. I might just eat this while we're, because I didn't eat, um, I didn't eat breakfast earlier. So there you go, guys. I mean, it's that simple. I mean, it's not pretty because I've got it all smeared around up here. It's not, it's not the prettiest of dishes, but this, and, and you could do raisins. If you, if you don't want to do like fresh fruit, you could do, oh my gosh, peanut coming in with a prime sub. Peanut, thank you so much for your resub. Tommy coming in with a sub. Holy cow, guys. Mmm, that's good. I can do apples in something like this. I can't just eat. I can't just eat apples. Tia, you have a lovely day. Happy birthday to you again, my dear. I hope you have a nice evening. Yeah, I love... Uh, this is more firm. I like more than firm. Hey, has anybody here ever tried fried oatmeal? Mm-hmm. Okay. Hang on. When you make your oatmeal... Make it stiffer than normal. So let it cook a little longer. Reduce that heat down. Really get it to where it's, it's thick, okay? That could be close, that could be close. Then I want you to take a small, depending on how much oatmeal you make, take a small loaf pan. Butter the inside of the loaf pan really, really well. Take all that oatmeal you just made and put it into that loaf pan. So you, you want to make a healthy batch of oatmeal because you want it about this thick. Put it inside there, put a piece of saran wrap over the top of it, stick it in your refrigerator overnight. The next morning, invert that out. And you might have to put it in some hot water to, to get it to come out. Invert that out and slice it into, into thick little slices, you know, about, about a half inch to an inch thick. Put some butter on your griddle, put those slices of oatmeal on there, fry them up, put maple syrup on there, whatever you want to put on there. It, just like fried polenta, yes, Jedi. It is a fantastic, and if you make the entire pan, right, you slice them all up, wrap each one in plastic wrap, and you can keep it in your freezer. Anytime you want fried oatmeal, you take it out of the freezer the night before, stick it in your refrigerator the next morning, fry it up. You've got some wonderful, wonderful. I just used, um, in this one here, I used agave, because agave has uh, a lower uh, glycemic index than honey or granulated sugar or brown sugar, but you can use whatever you want to use. Uh, whatever you guys want to use for a sweetener. I try not to eat a lot of refined sugar. That's why I had to do that. I had to change that one stream up because we were eating way too much sugar. Mm. Yeah, Spanish, same thing. Just like, just, like French, just like French toast. Fried meatloaf is the same thing. Make your meatloaf, fry it the next day. Yeah, so agave, just a little bit. I think I only used about a tablespoon of agave. But I'm getting plenty of sweetness from the apples. Or if you did raisins, particularly if you do raisins, get them in there when the oatmeal's hot. Or craisins, but get them in there when the oatmeal's hot and it replumps them up. And oh my gosh, it is so good. Mm hmm. I love agave. Mmm. All right. So I'm going to, I don't mind crust, but. I'm going to take off the hard crust on the bottom of this bread. Okay. I'm going to cut this up into little. Now, again, you're living in a dorm. Maybe you don't have, you know, a cutting area or whatever. You can always make a cutting area. Textbooks don't count. Don't be cutting up your textbooks. So we're going to mix these together. And we're going to mix these together in a separate bowl, not in the... Not in the mug, because I want, I want to be sure I can actually stir these up. So we're going to put this in here. We're going to add our egg. Okay. 
actually, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the egg first. I want to, I want to break this egg up a little bit. I want to whip it good. Do, 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 do. All right, so we got that. Uh, we need to have some milk, two tablespoons of milk, a little bit of cheddar cheese. You can do whatever kind of cheese you want. So let's do, wait, is this the one that's open? Yes. Oh my goodness gracious, somebody's coming in with a bitty drop. <laughs> Whip it classic song. How do you cook the pasta? The pasta's gonna actually be done in the microwave. So we're gonna do two tablespoons, one, two of that. We're gonna add a little pinch of our, this is fake cheese. Well, it's real cheese, but it's, it's, not, it's not cow dairy because I can't do cow dairy. So we're just gonna add a little bit of this. It's also gonna give us our salt. My milk is also dairy free. My cream cheese is dairy free. My yogurt, I'm not, everything I do is dairy free. He can have real dairy, I can't. We're gonna leave that here. We're also going to do, if I was gonna do a jalapeno, I would, I would um, cook the jalapeno first in a rice cooker. Just to kind of take some of that heat out. Uh, do, 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 do. I have no regrets. I'm sitting here eating chili lime corn nuts. My mom used to love, love, love corn nuts. Okay, so we have in the bowl, we have our egg, we have our milk, we have our cheese. Let's get some salt and pepper in here because as we know, we have to season as we go. But how about we change it up a little bit? Instead of using just regular old kosher salt, wah, wah, which is good, don't get me. This is my Vulcan fire salt. Exclamation point spices or spice, spices I think it is. I buy all my spices through Pinsy Spices. I gotta get this in. And this is spicy salt and I absolutely love it. Cause let's face it, it's eggs. Eggs need some help with some flavor. A Little bit of pepper, boom, boom, boom. Whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. And let's get out, wait, our spinach. Spinach shrink, so you don't have to worry about too much about spinach. I really like the menu today, I'm taking notes. I'm gonna save this VOD too because I think this is something that everyone can do. This is just to give you an idea. I want you guys to have a platform from which to build on, right? So when it comes to like these egg, egg in a mug, you can do whatever toppings you wanna do. You are not limited by any shape of the imagination. If you don't like these vegetables, use something else. We're gonna build, build those flavors. Thank you, Dade. I appreciate that. Okay, so in a mug, we're gonna place half the cube bread, half the cube bread, a desired amount of spinach, great, great vitamin A inside here. Let's put a, we'll put a healthy, a healthy amount of spinach. Uh, desired amount of spinach, red plate. Do we wanna add a little bit of onion to this, guys? Should we add some onion? Only because I already had some pre-cut from something else I was going to do. The caption typed up whiskey, whiskey, whiskey instead of whisking, whisking. Oh my gosh. Aspie, that is hysterical. I'm going to add a little bit more of this. Now, we do have seasoning in the egg. Now we're going to top this off with a little bit more of the bread. And I'm going to put just a last little bit of pepper on top. Color. Presentation, right? Presentation. And we are going to pour this. Now your microwave mileage might vary. Typically college dorm rooms have very low wattage microwaves. They have them at about, I think 750, maybe a thousand. I think mine's 1500. I don't know, gosh, my nose is just driving me a cuckoo today. Oh. Okay. Just keep dabbing, just keep dabbing. So we're gonna pour this all around in there. And I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna kind of put my fork in and pull down the edges. That allows for some of that egg to go down to the bottom. So now it wants me to mix this up until the thing is cooked. These <laughs> water. These are gonna save your life. They make these for smaller microwaves too. They usually come in a pack of two, but it's designed for you to put over your food and keep the splatters from happening. Nobody's got to. This you can throw in the dishwasher. You don't have to. 
wash it by hand if you don't want to, but it really keeps your microwave clean. And they have them in smaller sizes for smaller microwaves. Do not use, I mean, you can. So let's do, we'll go with one minute. We're gonna see what happens. Most paper towels are now made with recycled products that can catch fire in your microwave. So please use caution when using any type of paper towel, particularly the ones that have patterns in the paper towel, like, like the little pumpkins or leaves or hearts or stuff like that. Those typically can actually catch fire. Uh, have a nice big mug. Oh, I love the mug. Yeah, breakfast in, breakfast in a mug, Master Splits. So this is going to be, we're watching, I'm kind of keeping an eye on that. This is gonna be like an egg. Hmm. That's like really tasty. Really, really tasty. Watch it, don't walk away from things too much. Don't walk away. Oh, you know what? I was just gonna look up my microwave covers. No, not microwave covers. Uh, splatter guards. So I'm looking here to make sure the eggs are cooked all the way through. Mind you, I have a stronger microwave, so we're gonna look inside here. Wanna make sure that that's not still, okay, there's still a little bit of raw egg at the bottom. So we're gonna go, I probably could have added a second egg. I'm gonna add 30 seconds. We're gonna get rid of this spoon because that spoon had raw egg on it or potentially raw egg on it. I don't know why I have this spatula here. All right, let's get this rice cooker. Get the oatmeal out of here, boom, boom. All right. Now we're gonna go, now we're gonna do our two lunches. Or one could be lunch, one could be dinner. But I think it'll be, I think, Cooking in a microwave and a rice cooker doesn't mean lack of flavor. I will tell you that much right now. All right, let's see how we're doing. Oh, much better. So now, you guys want me to put this out on a plate so we can actually see it? Oh yes, Kanara. Of course, if you're in a dorm room or something like that, you don't want to dirty up another dish. You'll just eat it out of a mug. Just eat it out of a mug. Suki's in the house. Suki's part of the Ho-Ho homicide team. Suki's part of this ho-ho homicide team. Connor's here. Hello, Connor. How are you? Uh, he won again. Oh, who won? What did we see? Wait, I got to roll back up. Uh, Aspie, I hope you're still here so you can hear me say goodbye to you. Have a lovely, lovely day. And thank you so much for coming in and helping out the way you do. I just love, just love her to death. Uh, oh, I have a recipe for that anaconda. I think I do. Hang on. No, it's B. Serena. I have a, it's, it's B. Serena. I have an, um, a recipe for coffee filters. Yes, coffee filters. The only thing I don't like about using like paper towels and coffee filters: one, they're expensive; two, generates trash. So to, that's that's one of the things I'm, I'm anti sous vide on, on some things because of all the plastic trash it generates. Some bags you can use over again if you're cooking at a real low temperature, but some of the ones when you're cooking at 165. It, it, it adds up, a lot of that. Oh, your racer, your racer one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's go, let's go. I sent a pic of my mug on Discord. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see it. This is so dope, you're showing us, I'll turn it. Oh, heck yeah, so let's scoop this out. I want you guys to see what this is gonna look like. It's gonna look a lot like a bread pudding. And let's face it, it's gonna be round, okay? Because, because it was in a mug. But. But, oh my gosh, it smells so good. The bell peppers, the onion. It kind of looks like a little mini souffle or a little mini bread pudding, doesn't it? I'm not gonna have any pictures from stream today, so if anybody wants to capture this and, and grab these and put these on stream, that would be amazing for me because I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be, we're eating these. I'm hungry. <laughs> so there is, and if you want to, you could put, this has got cheese, you can see all the, all the cheesy goodness is up on top of there. A little bit of bread, so you got a little bit of carbs going on in here. But you know what? Let's kick it up a notch. Come on, guys. I had to brown some bacon. We're gonna put some bacon up on top of there. 
We got our bacon. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we're going there. Want to add some healthy fats? Let's add in the avocado. This is an this is a avocado that I already opened up. So the avocados here are hideously icky right now, and I didn't have that one wrapped real well, so it didn't get the. So let's put in a. If you wrap them really, really good, they'll, they'll last a long time. So let's do, I know, I'm cutting towards me, also being careful. Also being careful, begging for bacon. So let's put in some, we've got some avocado in there. I'm telling you guys, that is a protein packed breakfast right there. And that took a minute and a half to do. Okay, you can buy bacon bits pre-cooked. I don't, I don't, but usually I'll take a whole bunch of bacon bits when I make my bacon. I'll pre-cook them, then I freeze them up that way. So there you go. Avocado, avocado breakfast, breakfast bite. And you can eat this inside the mug, right? So you can eat, and if you, if you wanted to do this to go, you can get those, you can get those paper, those small little paper mugs, mix it up, grab it, boom, get to class. Get to class, but you're packing yourself with a lot of protein, a little bit of carbs inside here, and you're not gonna be as hungry afterwards. How many people go to the ER with avocado-related cuts? Oh, I can imagine, yeah, I can imagine. So, you can see the inside of it. Got that pretty, pretty green, a minute and a half, Oh, way too long. I have exams to study for. I know. Some things are worth the wait, though. All right, got some of that spinach. Mmm. Oh, that is, like, really good. Mmm-hmm. That's, like, really, really good. I would do this in a heartbeat. You know. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna think of how to prepackage these to where all you gotta take it out and just heat it. And just heat it up. That spicy salt boy, guys. Oh man, that stuff is good. That's got the zing. Then you don't have to worry about adding uh, jalapenos. You got it right there. Mmm. Okay. Hot. Whew. Mm hmm. All right. I will have all these recipes in the Discord. Oh my goodness gracious. It never fails. I walk away from two seconds and something way cool happens. Anaconda coming in with a sub. Thank you so much for your sub. I greatly, greatly appreciate that. Yeah, that spicy salt. Man, that spicy salt, it's called Vulcan salt. I have it over here. Here we go. It's called Vulcan salt. And I'm trying to figure out, I, I didn't save like the actual like ingredient list I just put on. It's called Vulcan fire salt. But I'll tell you, that stuff is good. That stuff is good. I dislike the texture of papers, of papers. Well, Dave, don't eat paper anymore, okay? <laughs> Peppers. That's why I record the whole lecture so I can sleep during class. Oh. I loved, well, not all lectures, but I love going to like, particularly if it's a, if it's a topic that intrigues me, anything like on, on like fermentation and food, uh, like all the recertification classes that I have to do and go through, I love them. I like the nuances of watching how excited the instructor gets. If, if you have a good instructor, they're getting excited. So yeah, her little paper texture is too icky. Hello, Heather, how are you? When I make frittatas, I make an extra batch in a muffin tin. Oh, there you go. That's a great idea. Ghost of Bobby. Um, Ghost of Bobby. What happened to Bobby? <laughs> what happened to Bobby? Oh my gosh, I, my nose, I swear. Oh. Oh. Okay. Just walk over and dab, dab, dab. Okay, so now, all right, this is, and this is our, this is our dessert stuff. Man, that was like, we had two really good Halloween. Am I seeing dead people? 
triple I would say because of the frozen uh, food classes we teach is if you wrap them really really well in plastic wrap individually and then put them into a freezer bag they'll last about three to six months I don't know how long she lasts, but they're usually gone within a week. <laughs> That's what, whenever I make, I did, remember the stream where I did a whole bunch of the egg bites because I had all the stuff to cook up? And I'll put, I wrap them two together, and Derek will have those for breakfast because they have egg and they have peppers and they have onions and uh, bacon or ham or whatever I have on, on stock is, is what they're going to get put inside there. And you, I thought, I'm going to make enough. This is going to last us a good three or four months. A month later, do we have any more of those egg bites? I'm like, what the heck? He's eating them for snacks, you know? But you gotta admit, that's a good snack to eat. That's a good snack to eat. What's the next recipe? The next recipe we're going to do is we're doing two. So we're gonna do two that's gonna be, they can be either for lunch or for dinner. They can, they can be interchangeable on here. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to do rice cooker chicken curry. That doesn't scream flavor. Yes, it does. It screams lots of flavor. And in the microwave, we're going to do a um, tomato pasta casserole with sausage. So we have a couple of different things. That's right. I know I put in the thing, did you or a loved one fall victim to a freshman 15? <laughs> and curry, you know, you can use any type of curry flavor you have. If you have green curry, red curry, yellow curry, I have a Maharaja curry over here, which is a yellow based curry. So that's what we're gonna use. That's what we're gonna use in ours. But let's make it a little bit easier. So let's think about this. We're in a dorm room, right? Uh, we're, or we're in an apartment that might have like one of those tiny little um, individual refrigerators. Same for the dorm room. Sometimes you get two, but most of the time you get one and you, you either divide the refrigerator in half or somebody gets the top shelf and somebody gets the bottom shelf and you label everything so people don't eat your snacks. Uh, my daughter was lucky when she went to college, she went to San Francisco State and she had a big dorm room. It was three bedrooms and two girls were in one room, two girls were in another room and three girls were in the bigger room. It had two bathrooms, but in the middle it had like a little living room and it had like a kitchen. So she had a full size refrigerator. I think it was like a three burner stove. So they were actually able to cook their meals, which was great, but did they? Probably not. Uh, probably not. And Claire Coffee, hello Claire. How are you doing? Can we get a shout out for Claire Coffee, please? Oh my gosh, delightful streamer from Belgium. Knows her coffee. I'm telling you what, I mean, I'm, I thought, I, well, I only do one type of coffee. We do a French press type of coffee over here, but she's got her own coffee. Th I mean, everything, it's just amazing. And I'm like, yeah, I need to try some of those flavors. I just wanted to say hi. Yeah, this is our new theme that's coming up in December, Ho Ho Homicide. So the entire month of December, I don't do like traditional Christmas. I don't put up a tree. I did when our daughter was younger and everything. So we're doing Ho Ho Homicide, true crime based on food. So we've got a lot of different things. We're gonna be cooking up some, some fun stuff. And we're not gonna, we're not gonna focus on the negative. We're, we will discuss where the recipe is coming from, um, but we're still gonna cook up a lot of good food and have a lot of good eats that you don't have to have as a last meal. You can have them anytime you want, anytime you want. Holland here, there you go, Becky. We have people here from Finland, Sweden, Belgium, Holland, England. I mean, all over, all over. My gosh, we just need to get copper confetti in here. We'd have somebody from Scotland, Scotland. Probably still not saying that right. I'm probably still not. <gasps> Kyle's here from a date night in, what, what? Canada, or is it Canada? Canada, eh? Canada, eh? Can we get a, can we get a shout out for Miss Kyle of a date night in, you guys? Oh my gosh, I love these streamers so much. And I'll tell you, here's what's, here's what's gotten really hard and where I feel so guilty. I love watching these streamers. These are the streamers I watched for months before I started streaming. The ones who fell off the wayside that I don't, and I, I never went, I would walk into their stream one time and these are the streamers here that I follow because I love how they represent themselves, how they represent their food, that they're having fun, that they don't take themselves so seriously. Like, oh, you're, I mean, they're having fun with their community and I, I just adore watching them. But now it's like, okay, between work, my streaming two days a week, my working two and a half days a week, the research I have to do, it's like I don't have the time to sit and like watch. I would watch them for hours. I would pop in, I'd have like two streams going side by side so I could watch them both. 
And I'm trying to figure out a way to wire up my headset to work. I have one ear and one, but I couldn't figure that out. Way too technical for me. And I just love to watch them. And I would spend hours watching these people because they're entertaining and it's good food. And I get inspired. If you inspire me, I am hooked. I am hooked. Claire Coffee, a date night in, so many rusty rhymes. I mean, my gosh, Chef Nagin. I mean, these are people that I watch because I really enjoy their content. Like Rusty Rhymes, they had their talk show. Remember, you guys have heard me talk about their talk show, him, him and Lady In's talk show on Sundays, and today it was Mind Over Matter. And, you know, can the mind really control how you react to things, perceive things? Can you cure yourself with Mind Over Magic? I mean, some really good thought-provoking uh, conversations. Just love it. Content. There it is, Claire, right there. Content. Content. I enjoy I've uh, I'm still the new kid on the block. I, I, that's the way I look at it. I mean, I look up to these people because these people have been around for a long time. And so many of them are celebrating their you know, two, three-year anniversaries. And I'm like, I'm coming up on a year. In January, it'll be one year. And these people, I mean, I'm like, oh, my gosh. I, I thought, I want to do this for fun, have a good time. And these people are still at it after three years. And they're still nailing it every single time. It's fantastic. Gives me hope. Gives me hope. I like doing it. I love how wholesome this food is. It really is, Claire. It really is. I have run into a couple that are um, snarky when it comes to certain things, but I don't visit them anymore. <laughs> I'm not in their discords or anything like that. So if I'm, if I'm in your streams, guys, it's because I love what I see. Love what I see. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so rice cooker. This is going to take about 25 minutes to cook. Let's start the curry first. So in a dorm room, right? If you don't want to go through the steps of cooking up a chicken breast ahead of time, because we do want to cook the chicken breast ahead of time, you can buy pre-cooked chicken. Whoa, hello, Dave, stay on the door there. Don't be getting all crazy on me. I don't know what all I need for this, but I'm just going to get some of this stuff out. Um, do I need any green? I guess I, I probably should have checked these. these Note to self, prepare for Kanara to pop into my future streams. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, so we need, we have, we have some golden raisins, typical of, of curry food. I do need to get some onion chopped up. Didn't I get that out? Yes, I did. Here's my onion. A little bit of cashews. All right, we'll do that. We'll go for some cashews um, with the weird color. Here we go. I buy my cashews in bulk and I keep them in mason jars. These are my snacks. These are my snacks and I'll get the yogurt out at the end and we'll, that, that'll get mixed in later. So we're gonna uh, cook the onion and the garlic. Oh, how much garlic did I need? Half a tablespoon of garlic, eh, about three or four cloves. Let's see what I have left over here of this one. We'll just use whatever's in here. Mostly gaming. I do, um, I, have, I have never played Minecraft. I played uh, Skyrim for years and years and years. And I played ESO for, for, hey, ESO for many years, which is Elder Scrolls Online. I do play Ark. I do play Destiny 2. So you guys, I do have a gaming section on my Discord. So if you're on console, if you're on PC, you know, or whatever, let me know. If it's a game that I have on my computer or I have on my Xbox, I'm happy to join you or you can join me in my games. Lots of fun. So this is gonna be one of those things where we're cooking up some onion and some garlic, right? Not gonna be enough weight to hold that cooker thing down. So we're gonna, we're gonna hold that. So I'm gonna get all this stuff chopped up ahead of time. Kanara, you are an amazing streamer and the content you provide is astounding. You always make us laugh. Oh, thank you for that, Aspie. All your food safety tips and mine are wonderful. The creative recipes you come up with are fantastic. You have a genuine heart. Oh, and loving personality. <sighs> Aspie. Don't make me onion on screen. <laughs> Stream, screen, <laughs> like I'm on the big screen. <laughs> oh my gosh, Aspie, that was, such a, that was such a lovely, lovely thing for you to say. Thank you so much for that. I love, I love doing this. It is so much fun to do. If you all get bored of stuff, let me know. We'll punt and come up with something different. We'll punt and come up with something different. Yeah, she can't make me onion on stream. She's not allowed to make me onion on stream. I love Skyrim. Now, important question. Which Skyrim faction did you join? Okay. So, I have done a run-through of Skyrim six times now. 
I've never finished the game because I couldn't decide. I've never done the final battle. I, and I don't want any spoilers. I've never watched it on YouTube because I didn't want to know. I didn't want to know. So it's like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? That's probably enough. That's probably enough garlic. Let's get that one going. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to. I probably should do that. I'm still trying to figure out how to get my stream. The Xbox. I can't get... I can't get my sound through OBS from my Xbox to come through it. So if anybody can help me with that, Dade and I are trying to figure it out and I cannot get it figured out. So we're going to just mince this stuff up. Oops. Remember safety first. Okay, so does anybody, oh, okay. So Becky, <laughs> Becky. Becky, Becky, I still have a, I still have a quart there. Becky, I don't know about you, but you want to know about kimchi? <laughs> this is a gallon of kimchi I made. I haven't eaten it. I haven't eaten out of this jar yet. I'm st still finishing up the other one. I'm going to send some of this home with um, my daughter when she, when she comes up. My daughter's due up here. You guys will get to meet Laura in, she'll be up here on the 21st. So you get to meet her like after the 21st. So yeah, so this is, this is a huge batch of, of, of kimchi. So I love kimchi and I will send you a recipe for this kimchi. Remind me, so Becky, send me, uh, send me a message on Discord, exclamation point Discord for those that haven't joined the Discord yet. Send me a private message on Discord, I'll send you that recipe for the kimchi. Kimchi, the, big, the biggest thing about kimchi that I love is that unlike normal ferments, which normal ferments can take three to four weeks, kimchi, you, you can do a quick form of kimchi. Now that's, that's what this is. This is a quick form of kimchi. So I chopped the cabbage up. I didn't do the whole head of Napa cabbage where you cut it in half and you soak it in salt water for like three days and you take it out and then you, you put the sauce in between each one. This is actually something where I can just quickly pull out a handful of kimchi and stick it in the whatever food I'm making. I did, um, uh, I don't know, I'm not pronouncing this right, mandu guk which is a Korean dumpling soup. I made that last night with the, when it had kimchi in it. Oh my gosh, it was so good. So incredibly good. South Korea, no kimchi. In South Korea, you don't eat South Korea. Wait, South Koreans don't eat kimchi? Hanbi eats kim kimchi. He's from South Korea, or his family is. I think he was born here. I think he was born in the States. I'm not reducing the garlic in this recipe. Most recipes I do reduce the garlic because we don't care for it as much anymore. I know, I heard you all. I, 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 heard, I, heard, I heard this from all of you. As you get older though, you find the things just like, eh, don't want. How is it that I can cook practically anything except microwave popcorn? I stopped doing microwave popcorn probably 12 years ago. I do all my popcorn, on, I, I pop all my popcorn on the stove now. You can get air poppers. You, there's another popcorn popper, my dad has it. And, and, and it's a pot and you lift up the, you, you flip open the lid, the lid you know, lifts like back and forth. He puts the oil in, he puts the, the popcorn in. And then instead of having to shake it on the stove, he just has to turn this handle which keeps the popcorn moving so it doesn't scorch and actually allows it to pop. No, I mean, if you have no kimchi, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, so here's what's funny last night. So in this, this soup dish that I made, and it's by uh, Manchi's uh, recipe. So in the soup that I made, what I do is that I took um, some kimchi and put it in the bottom of the bowls and put the, the broth with the beef and the dumplings and the egg and everything on top. As Derek's eating the soup, he's like, I don't know what this flavor is. He says, but it doesn't taste anything like when he took a taste of it out of the pot. He tasted it and went, oh, this is really good. But then when he had it with dinner, he was like, this tastes totally different and it's 10 times better. And I was looking at it, kimchi. Kimchi, it adds so much flavor. Kimchi just by itself, to me, it, it's a little salty, whatever. But I like it, but it's when I eat a bite of something and then take a bite of kimchi. Oh, oh, game changer. Game changer in the food. So yeah, I, I definitely, I highly recommend kimchi to, to folks. I did a kimchi fried rice the other night and he was like, man, that smells really good. What is that? He goes, that's not your normal rice, kimchi. Now granted, when you cook it, 
you do lose out on the probiotics. You know, if you eat it, you know, if you just, most, most Korean dishes, when they do like the family, they'll have a bowl that has kimchi in it. And, you know, you'll take a bite of your stuff and you'll reach over and you'll grab some of the kimchi and you'll enjoy the kimchi with it. So, so there's three cloves of garlic or whatever the tablespoons of garlic was supposed to be. And we're going to get some onion. I'm going to get a little bit of onion in here. Yeah, definitely. I, I've, I, just like I cook rice on the stove now, since learning how to do it the proper way. And guys, listen, look at just because somebody goes to culinary school, which I did, does not mean I am the end all be all of, of cooking and, and everything else. I have my niche, which, you know, I'm, I'm very good at, at what I do with my niche. But just because somebody, you know, is culinary trained does not necessarily mean they know end all be all. And I learned how to cook rice from, that's probably enough, uh, from Hanby who is Korean, and since I learned how to cook rice that way, I have never looked back, and it has been the best rice every single time. I've only had it raw, and I want to try it with rice. Oh, yeah, you definitely want to do that with rice. Okay, so we're going to... Yeah, definitely. Oh, I'm telling you, oh, it's good, it's good with eggs, too. I would warm it up a little bit, and what you could do is, like, while you're getting everything prepared, take a little bit of kimchi out of your refrigerator, just put it in a little bowl. Just have it sitting there. Let it come to room temperature. Okay, that's probably more than I'm going to need of onion. We'll get a little bit more of this. There we go. Put, we'll put the onion back in here. I was cooking at like 14. See, I love that. I started cooking at about the age of 12. And here's what's really interesting. And this is this is nothing against nothing against my parents in any way, shape, or form. When you're raised, you're raised in such a way that um, you are getting experiences from your parents, your grandparents, your great grandparents. So dishes that my mom and dad cooked were dish. I already had some onion in here pre-cut. I even used that for the eggs and I just sat here and just looked at it like, uh, what? Dork. Um, so when, you know, when my mom was learning to cook from her mother, it was based on how things were done when, when grandma cooked, right? But then let's look, let's look at this. Things change, times change. You know, wars happen, science happens, right? And we get a lot of stuff that changes and, and canned goods became very popular. Meals in boxes, pre-cooked meals in boxes became extremely popular. Let's put a little bit of oil in there. We're gonna let these go ahead and simmer. Now granted, this is not going to, <laughs> I could probably put a weight of something on here that would keep it down because I don't need to put the lid on. I don't want them to steam. All right. So see that, that how the lid won't stay down? That's because it's not heavy enough. So we're going to add a weight to it. Even if I put the lid on it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be enough to weigh it down. And there goes that little thing over there. So I'm going to put this on here. Hopefully that won't fall in. No, that's not going to. Ooh, there we go. We'll let that sit there and do its thing. So my mom and dad, my mom probably started experimenting with foods that were seen in magazines, Women's Day magazine, Sunset magazines, stuff like that. And some of these were, you know, like box food, like uh, box scalloped potatoes. One of our staple dishes was pork chops that were cooked inside the scalloped potatoes in the oven. And, you know, great way to get protein, great, a, a quick way to, to cook dinner without having to prep a bunch of different ingredients. So when I grew up, I was, I was always wanting to try different foods. And so I started doing like little things like little mini pizzas on uh, English muffins and cooking up stuff like that. And then we just kept, it just kept going and, and progressing from there. And then of course, uh, back then you know, we had Julia Childs, but I remember the first one, the first modern cooking shows, uh, and I think this was after I was married, was watching Emeril Lagasse cook. And I was like, huh, there's a lot of different foods out there that I hadn't been exposed to, mainly because we didn't eat them growing up. My parents didn't care for those type of foods, so why would they cook those type of foods? There's no reason for them to. Oh, I was like, well, what's that sound? So I don't know if you guys can hear that. So that's now simmering, cooking up a little bit. We're gonna let that, but as I, I can't take this weight off 
without stopping the cooking process. So I'm gonna hold this down here a little bit. But you can simmer in these, just like you can simmer in the Instant Pot. That heating element will boil water. So if you got, like I said, if you guys wanna do eggs, you can boil eggs in your rice cooker. A lot, of, a lot of directions to say you have to put them on a steamer, which you can if you want, you don't have to. I didn't. Sorry to hear that, but in this day and age, everything is on, yes. And that's one of the neat things is all the food that you can find on YouTube. And we've connected all the cultures. So you get, you get a lot of wonderful, wonderful experience. Okay, so we put the onion and the garlic in there. We're gonna cook for that until it's tender. We're gonna add the curry powder. And the reason why we're adding the curry powder prior to adding anything else is we're going to bloom these spices. So I want you guys to understand that when we're cooking with things in the microwave and things in a rice cooker, you're not gonna sacrifice flavor in any shape of the imagination. We're putting our curry powder on that hot plate. It's gonna bloom those oils. We're gonna add all that to it. And then we're gonna add in, we've got this. We've got, I know this is all, this is all canned stuff that you can, this is gonna be enough to do probably three meals like this. So you would just scoop out what you need and you can make three, you got three, three curry dishes right inside there. I have two dozen cookbooks. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I love some of the, some of the old recipes and things that I have. So curry powder, add the water, the tomato juice, the chicken, the raisins. We're gonna mix all this stuff together. We're going for it. So how much chicken? So I like to buy, if I'm, Normally, I would just cook up my chicken, right? But we're thinking dorm room here. They even sell these in smaller bags. This is the smallest one I could find. They even have bigger bags of this. Babe, thank you so much for that follow. I appreciate that very much. Welcome on in. The nice thing about this is that don't just toss this whole thing in the freezer if you're doing like dorm room cooking. Open this up and portion this out. Do four ounces wrap it up in plastic wrap, four ounces, wrap it up in plastic wrap, then put them all back inside here and freeze it. So when you need to go do a dish like this, you can quickly just take out, otherwise this is gonna freeze in a big hunk and you'd have to thaw the entire thing to get out what you need. So if, you, if you've got freezer space on there, buy a bag that's about this big, you're gonna get at least four of these dishes out of just this one bag and a box of rice. And you can think this box of rice I think was 89 cents. It was on sale for 89 cents. And watch for chicken that's on sale, you know? And of course, this isn't gonna open the way I want it to. Fine, I'll get out my scissors. Fine, okay, so how much chicken does it want? So the original recipe wanted a half a pound of chicken. A pound is 16 ounces, it wants eight ounces of chicken. I'm just gonna go by, by look here. And by taste, because that's always important too. Hmm, a little bit more. We don't want to skimp ourselves out. Zatarans, big hit there. I love Zatarans, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, do, I do enjoy uh, Zatarans a lot. And that's what we're having. Zatarans jambalaya mix is going in this. It's not traditional curry. It's not traditional curry. I am going to put the, the chicken back in the fridge because I don't want to. I don't want to lose out on that, but I'm going to cut this up a little bit. We're going to cut this, cut this up into bite-sized chews. Now, if you're somebody who wants to do this ahead of time, weigh each portion out, cut it up on the size that the recipe or that common recipes are going to call for, and then that's one less step you have to do. Uh, we'll cut those two in half. All right. How are we looking up? Oh my gosh, it smells good though. Oh, come on, garlic and onion cooking together. Of course it's gonna, well, see I knew that was gonna do that. All right. Those are starting to soften up. All right, so we're gonna add in a tablespoon of our seasoning, right? One tablespoon of our, oh, that's the wrong one. So jars, measuring spoons, don't mix well. They don't go in. So. If you're doing a lot of spices out of jars, get yourself an elongated set of measuring spoons because these go inside. All right, so there is our curry spice. It already smells good. Let's let this, we're gonna let this bloom a little bit.
stop it. Okay, there we go. All right. So now, oh my gosh, this smells amazing already. All right, so what else does it want in here? We've got our chicken. Let's get our chicken in there because it wants that in here, right? Onion, garlic, cook, we did that. Curry powder, add water. Oh, let's go. Okay, let's add our, how much water do you want? We are going to do one cup of water, but how much of the, uh, how much of the tomato? Four ounces of tomato. Okay, you can freeze the rest of this too. You don't have to. And one cup of water. I'm eyeballing this. If you want to do this exact, this is eight ounces. Just measure out four ounces. Wants a cup of water. This is for the rice, the dehydrated rice. Again, I'm using cold water. I'm not going to do hot water. But before I put anything else in here, I want to mix this up real good. All right. So there's our water, our tomato sauce. Mix in the chicken. There's our chicken. It wants some raisins. My hands have got chicken on them, so I'm not going to do... That's gonna, those are going to plump up really nice, by the way. When you cook raisins or cook fruit, oh my goodness gracious. I didn't have a functioning kitchen. Wait, we had to share a kitchen too, but one of my roommates left. Oh, tinfoil in the microwave. Yeah, these, spoon, these spoons, uh, Heather, are fantastic. Oh my gosh, where's my scissors? So this has a seasoning packet, that's a seasoning that's inside of it, and it tends to clump like this. Make sure all those are broken up so that your spices, matter of fact, let's just put this into a bowl real quick just to make sure that those are all blended together. And it wants half of this. So this would be enough for two. This would be enough for two. So we'll, we'll dish out half of this. How much, how much is this? Eight ounces? We'll, we'll measure out four ounces, but I'm gonna break up those little spice clumps. I don't wanna short myself on flavor. All right, let's do four ounces. A little bit of meat for me. Wipe this up. Drive me cuckoo. A little bit of meat for me. All right, turn on. I went to school right out of high school. I went to school. <laughs> I went to work right out of high school. All right, so we want four ounces of this. All right, there's two ounces. And there's two ounces, there's four ounces. We're gonna give this a good stir. We want all that water be mixed in there. The tomato sauce mixed in there. I wish you guys could smell this. This smells so good. What we'll do is that we'll top this with our yogurt and the nuts. And that, that's, it's, a, it's like a one pot meal, but it's in, it's in like a little mini, like a little mini controlled uh, recipe. Fantastic. There was one time I was making food and the seasoning packet was like chalk clump. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, to break it up like that, that's smart. Some of them, and if they're really, really clumped up like that to where they are hard as a rock, that's, that's old product. That's, that's, that's pretty old product on there. All right, so we're gonna work on our, we're gonna work on our tomato pasta. Come on, who doesn't like pasta, right? Who doesn't like pasta? I might have to curry off of this because I don't wanna get curry on my bacon later. These are bacon weights, these, these cast iron weights that I have. I have two rectangle ones, I have a big round one. And when you do your, your, 
when you do your bacon, you can weight it down so it they don't get too curly crazy on you. You know, people like curly fries. Why can't we have curly bacon? Asking for a friend. All right, now let's start on our pasta. So how are we gonna do this pasta, folks, right? This is, this is the big, we're gonna treat our pasta just like any other pasta. We're gonna start it off in water. We're gonna add salt to our water. We're gonna season our pasta. So I've talked to you guys about adding layers of flavor in pasta. Okay, so your dorm room cooking, and let's face it, I know you have, I know you have beer and wine or something, you have box wine or something in your dorm room. But if you have leftover wine where you haven't used like the whole thing of wine, you can put that in your pasta water to season your water to season your pasta. Recommend using small, small size pasta versus like big macaronis because we're doing this in the microwave. Pasta. So how much pasta, how much pasta should we do? Let's, let's measure out So this says, I'm just kind of curious if they even give you microwave instructions. They probably don't. Because they're probably thinking, wait, you what? Uh, yeah, not everybody has a stove. So we're going to do, well, let's see. Let's start, let's start with a half a cup. We can, we can always use this for later. If you have too much pasta, did you guys know that pasta freeze is good? But again, that's subjective to if you have room in your freezer. So if you cook up a bunch of extra pasta and you don't have a use for it, you can coat it with a little bit of olive oil. And I mean, little bit of olive oil. And then freeze it in like a, a baggie or whatever. All right, we're gonna put this in the microwave and we're gonna let this cook at the same time. Make sure, yeah, that's the biggest thing is a lot of people don't necessarily have uh, freezer space. But if you make extra pasta and you don't have any freezer space, you can put it in, um, put it in the refrigerator, right? And then the next morning, put some butter in the bottom of a fry pan. So I'm going to go, I'm going to put that on for five minutes. It's going to take longer than that. We got to get that water boiling and then it has to boil in the water for the same amount of time as if it had to boil on, on the stove. So we're gonna let that, we're, just, we're not, we're not, we're not gonna use the stove at all. Cats, Comey, a little pasta fari and prayer for you. Our pasta, who art in colander, training be your noodles. Thy noodle come, thy sauce be yum on top of some grated parmesan. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trample on our lawns. <laughs> Lead us not into vegetarianism, but deliver us some pizza. For thine is thy meatball, the noodle, and the sauce forever and ever. Ramen. <laughs> that is fantastic. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, the lawn part. <laughs> Trample on our lawns. Oh, where's my water? <laughs> Thank you, Atomic, for the hydrate. I appreciate that. That we knew. That was good. That was good. I, I love that. Okay. This is already starting to simmer. I'm happy with that. But remember I said we're doing, we're going to make this pasta with sausage. We're going to make this pasta with cheese. I forgot my cheese. We'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and get the cheese out. Cheese, please. I'm going to use the same cheese that I used in the gadzooks. Did I, oh, here it is. I'm gonna use the same cheese that I used in the... So these are little individual sausages. Again, you could buy a pack of four of these. You don't have to, find the cheapest ones you've got, right? And you can wrap them individually and put them in a bag and they'll, they'll stay for actually quite a while because they are a process. How dare you forget to grab the cheese? <laughs> a shame about the no vegetarian part though. I'm all about the meat. I'm all about proteins. So on this dish, I'm only gonna do one sausage, right? 
show. Okay, that's another thing, guys. Oh, you guys are gonna hate me. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm afraid I'm gonna ruin food for you. And I. Oh, there we go. And I don't want to do that. Let me pull this thing back out here. Okay. So this one is actually. I like the. I like the measurements of this one. Serving size is one link. Oftentimes, when you buy things like kielbasa, read the serving size. You guys are gonna be shocked. Two inches. Piece of sausage, a piece of kielbasa that big is considered a serving based on, on the ingredients. So in this one sausage is 11 grams of fat, two grams of carbohydrates, and one gram of fiber. So I don't need, I don't need to keep that. And I'm going to use this. I'm going to cut this up. So if you put this in big slices, people tend to gobble up the, the sausage quicker. But if you cut it up into more manageable slices and let it blend into the dish, you don't need as much meat. You can, you can actually get away with half the meat. What? Tomato sausage pasta. Yeah, this is done with, um, we have curry powder. We have Zatarain's jambalaya mix. We have the, um, so that's gonna have your rice in there. Now, right now, we're, and that has our chicken in there and it has our, um, our what is in there? Raisins are in there. So this whole one pot meal over here is cooking. This is all gonna be done in the microwave. So this is sausage. I bought a can of saccharuni. It was on sale. Saccharuni pasta sauce by, um, Newman, Newman's own saccharini because it's a little bit spicy. So if you wanted to do this totally from scratch in the microwave, could you? Of course you could. But you're going to have tomato sauce, tomato paste. You're going to have to have your garlic. You're going to have to have your fresh herbs. And that's a lot of stuff to store in the refrigerator. Buying jars like this that are cheap and when they're on sale, the only one I do not like is I do not like pressed, no, is it ragu. Ragu is too sweet for me. Read the sugars on ragu pasta sauce. If anybody has a jar of ragu pasta sauce, go grab it. Tell me what the sugars are on that. The sugars on this one are, let's see, a serving, a serving size is one half cup, and the sugars are six grams of sugar for a half a cup. Some of the ones by Ragu are upwards of 15 grams of sugar. That's an exorbitant amount of sugar. That's a lot of sugar. So anyway, I'm, I'm gonna keep this, keep the sugar at a minimum. And because of this dish, the way I'm making it, this is gonna be two servings. So it's dinner tonight and maybe lunch the next day. You know, we wanna keep it. So see that? That's one sausage, but it looks like a lot more meat than just, if I had taken this and just diced it up into rings, I probably would've gotten 10 rings versus having a whole clump of, yeah, serving size. That's the biggest thing is, is learn to read the serving sizes. And that's how I tell people, particularly people who want to start diets, don't start these fad diets right off the get-go. First, you want to talk to a medical professional, particularly a nutritionalist, somebody who understands how food reacts to your body, maybe based on medication, maybe based on your, your uh, fat index. But for me, portion control. So I got sick back in February. I was offline for three weeks because I was sick. And I lost, at that time, I, I fluctuate a few pounds back and forth, but I basically lost over 30 pounds. One from being sick and then two from when, you, when you're done being sick, you're just not as hungry, right, as you were. And so you're eating smaller things. So I tell people, don't, don't do your dinner on these big dinner plates because your mind says, if that dinner plate isn't full, I'm not getting a full meal. Go down to the next size dinner plate. Portion control. Portion, portion, portion. I am talking to the cutting board again. All right, so let's see where we're at on this. I want to give this a quick stir. This is five minutes. It's starting to get hot. We're going to go another five minutes. So let's get a baggie for this. Should we do, you know, that's going to be a lot of stuff. Let's do one and a half, shall we? I think that's more reasonable. This is Italian sausage, which I thought, hey, I'm doing tomato. I'm doing like a marinara sauce curry powder. We're just going to have a fusion of flavors going in here. But doing something like this versus doing a sausage versus a pound of hamburger, already seasoned. You don't have to have a spice cupboard full of a bunch of different spices. Buying things that are already working for you saves you money and saves you time. Let's face it. College kids don't have a lot of time between partying and studying. Studying should be the first thing. 
I think it should be the first thing. I'm not boiling yet. That's that's great. Yeah. So my, I I always eat. We call it a I call it a hash brown plate. It's a long story. I have breakfast in the morning. I have like a little bit of hashew, ca cashew, a little bit of hashew, hash browns. What the heck? Am I having a stroke? I don't think so. Um, Cause I feel both sides of my face going up when I smile. And with a little bit of like my fake eggs and, and whatnot. And this way I don't eat like a giant plate of, a giant plate of vittles. Now for, for the, the tomato pasta dish that we're working on here, I'm gonna be using this cheese here. This one, you could put cheese on it. I recommend goat cheese though. I do recommend goat. Lindsay, hello. Uh, I'm sitting with a ham and cheese and pickle sandwich. Ooh. That's a good one. Did you grill it? Is, it? is it a grilled ham and cheese with pickles? With like fried pickles on the inside? Mm, mm. Has anybody here tried the peanut butter and dill pickle sandwich yet? You're all just gonna leave me, leave me hanging. I'm telling you, creamy peanut butter. Now if you want crunchy, you can do crunchy. Get those. Those dill pickle, has to be dill pickle, those dill pickle spear, spears, they're not spears, excuse me, the flats, like for like sandwiches, and peanut butter on both sides of your bread, a layer of dill pickles, nom, 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 nom. I'm telling you, it's really good stuff. Good protein, good protein. If you're doing your own fermented pickles, you're also getting probiotics, but if not, that's okay too. I've never grilled it, no. Ooh, sourdough bread though, you earn points with that. Now, here's the thing. Do I just eat a piece of that raw sausage? I did. Most of your sausages are all fully cooked. You don't have to cook them. You can just eat them raw. But it's nice to have them browned up. You know, it's nice to have the browning. That's looking pretty darn good. We might give that, hey, this is window. She did, she always steals my stuff. She's busy because she's got the, she runs a dairy farm and it's their farm and be right back trash night. Oh, I remember doing that. Pickles and peanut butter, it is fantastic. I am going to give this a stir. Oh my goodness gracious guys. Hey, what are you doing in here, handsome? Get some stuff. What are you gonna have for lunch? Well, pretty soon some jambalaya here will be ready. Some curry jambalaya will be here, will be ready. I can't, I, you know what, that's it. Words are hard, words are out. And then we get to do desserts. I'm looking forward to doing the desserts. Oh, are we boiling yet? We're getting really, really close. This is another set of five minutes. He never says a word sometimes. Well, he talks quiet. <laughs> he talks very quiet, because he did, he did answer me, but probably didn't pick up on the, on the mic. My mom liked peanut butter and bologna sandwiches with butter on the bread too. Whoa, and Lucky coming in with a raid. Hello, welcome on in. Oh my gosh, can we get a huge shout out for M. Luck, please? Thank you so much for bringing your family over here to meet my family. Uh, there's some chicken in there. If you want some chicken to put on top of there in the yellow bag. Oh my gosh, sorry about that. I got confused. That Raiders, welcome on in. My name is Kanara. I'm a food and drink streamer. M. Luck, what were you streaming? Give us the details, I wanna know. I wanna know the details. Karmic Bob, hello, hello. Oh my gosh, my Sunday's, gr my Sunday's great now. Just because you're here with your family. Oh, I just, oh my gosh, you guys, that is so wonderful for you to come over here. Guys, Raiders, if you could do me a huge favor, right down there is my logo, give that a tap. That brings you directly into my stream. Later on, that might help my numbers out for something like that, who knows? Karmic Bob coming in with 69 biddies. Really need to get that umbrella. I really need to get that umbrella. Hang on, I gotta check the pasta. So today we are doing all, every meal that I'm cooking up today, we're talking about dorm room cooking. We're doing everything in a rice cooker or in the microwave. So if you're living in a dorm, geez Louise, Derek. <laughs> Packaging everywhere. <laughs> so if you live like in a small apartment, maybe you don't have a stove and all you have is a rice cooker. I have chicken curry going in the rice cooker here right now. I'm getting ready to make a, a uh, tomato pasta and sausage dish over there. Derek is unbothered. Yeah, he just comes in like, before he would, he would never come in like anywhere near stream. Now he's like, yeah, I'm over it. I'm gonna go in and get my grub, I don't care. 
vegan kofta made with, oh, how is the Beyond Meat? Which meat did you use? Which meat? I'm kind of curious about that. My grocery store just started carrying that, and I thought, oh, I might have to try that in January. So Raiders, for those, okay, for those who just came in and, and, and popped on over here, we're doing ho-ho homicide in the month of December. So I am doing true crime in the month of December. Everything's going to be based on food crimes. We're also going to talk about a couple famous last meal from a couple of uh, people. And these are all like really, really bad people. So we're not going to focus on them, but we're going to focus on the food. But I don't celebrate Christmas the traditional way. And I love true crime. So for those that have podcasts that you'd like to listen to that's true crime, let me know what those podcasts are that you like to watch or like to listen to, like to watch. Yeah, I sit there and I watch the bar go along the bottom over here. That sounds like heaven to me. I'm a veggie going on vegan, yes. But needs some added flavor. The hummus worked perfectly well with it. So this is gonna be interesting. So did you use like the, did you buy like the patties or just like the, I guess he doesn't know how to close the refrigerator either. Um, or just like the pound that was like like ground meat where you can kind of uh, grind it up like that. Fluffy kittens, welcome on in. How are you? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Lovely to see everybody here. Yeah, if you guys are having fun, if you learn something, hit that follow button. It's free. It's the F word we like. It's the F word we use here. Free, fun, food, fam. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, my stove. Thank you. Yes, I do love my stove. I do love myself. Okay, so this popped up. Let's see where we're at on here. A lot of people think the part of the rice cooker, oh my gosh, you guys, this, this dish. Okay, I am gonna unplug this because rice cookers, even though they go on a warm setting, the rice cooker I'm using, guys, is just a little tiny individual little rice cooker. I don't use this for rice. I only use this for, now I'm gonna, I wanna taste this a little bit. Now. I want to make sure that rice is cooked. Mm, it is. We're going to let the lid sit on it. Oh, wow. That flavor is really good. That curry pops, not overpowering. Yeah. That's some good, good stuff. The stove is older than every active ship in the U.S. military, save one. She's 87 years old. Whoop. Okay, so... We want to make sure we don't boil over. One way to know if your pasta is done as you're cooking it in a microwave like this is when you're stirring it. When the pasta is still raw or it's still hard and even halfway through, you actually can feel the vibrations of it knocking on the spoons. It, it, like you're stirring something hard. It's when it gets really where you don't feel it as much. You're getting really close to it to, be, to being done. Oh, let's get out our... This dish is a, is a really fast dish to do. And this dish, you guys saw this, in the time we're making this other dish and chit-chatting a little bit, the other dish, this dish here is gonna be done. Saccharoonie. I wanna, I should have done this before so I can show you guys. I'm gonna teach you all a secret, okay? I've taught this to several people. I have a clip on Irish Kate's page. She was having a heck of a time opening up a jar. Don't take a knife like a butter knife, and hit the edge of the jar like this. Don't bang the edge of this on your countertop. Two things. One, you're going to probably dent your countertop. You can break chips off on granite. You can also get little glass slivers on there that you might end up eating. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to make sure this is on here tight. These jars are concave on the bottom, just like canning jars are. But these aren't for canning, for home canning use. Hold, whichever is your dominant hand, hold the jar the opposite way, like this. With this concave thing, with the palm of your hand, I want you to hit it hard. That forces the air up, up to here, and this thing will open up like a dime. I mean, just like a dime. Hot water, which expands, yeah, that does expand the metal on it. But if they're on there really, really good, ooh, I think we're gonna, I think this is gonna be done. I think this is gonna be done. Now all we have to do is heat that up with the sauce and the sausage. All right, let's see where we're at on this. Whew. If you've cooked something in your microwave that does produce a lot of steam, oh, this is definitely done. Let's see, let's try one of these. Leave your microwave door open for a minute after you take it out, okay? There are vents and fans inside there that if they get too much moisture control, you can get an error message on your, 
I learned how to do that from the wonderful streamer called Kanara. Thank you, Betty. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Let me give this a quick strain. That was my... All right. So we have pasta. Oops. We have pasta. We're going to stir in our meat, which is going to get... Gosh darn it. Don't want that piece. Drats. So how long did I talk? That took 15 minutes total. I did five, I did three sets of five. So here we got our pasta. We have our, our meat is inside here. I'm adding just, you can add, you can, if you want your soupier, add all the sauce. If you want it more of like a pasta dish, just add enough sauce to make it like a pasta dish. This is where you are in control. Because remember, this pasta is going to absorb some of this liquid. This is why pasta always, like when you're having spaghetti or any type of pasta dish, when you make it up for dinner, you're like, oh man, this tastes so good. But when you have it the next day, have you ever noticed how much better it tastes, how much better spaghetti is the next day? That's because the spaghetti sat in that sauce in the refrigerator and absorbed more of that flavor. And that's why you get a much better, a much better dish. And I just realized I'm talking to that on here. I have a microwave with a range fan above my stove. If I boil it, too many pots of stuff on Yes, my fan will come on automatically. If I were to turn on all those burners right now, that fan would automatically kick on. That's actually a safety thing. That's a, that's a good thing. So we're gonna add a little bit more pasta sauce in here. Not a whole lot. Oh goodness gracious, this smells so good. Oh, pasta down, pasta down. And I am a pastafarian. I love pasta. And this is that saccharini pasta, so it's got a kind of a kick with the peppers and everything. Good, good stuff. Let's add a little bit of cheese in here. I am gonna zap this just a little bit in the microwave, maybe 30 seconds, just to make sure that that sausage is heated through. Love cold spaghetti, I have a Ziploc bag. I don't know that I've ever, I fried it up on a fry pan the next morning for breakfast, but I don't think I've ever eaten it cold, but why wouldn't you? I mean, we eat cold spaghetti. Oh, you know what, just, just, just stick it in. That's all I have left. Just, just use it. Sometimes, like I said, use, if you have leftover wine, and maybe you only have like eight ounces of wine left over, some says, yeah, I'm, if, we have, if I'm living in a dorm and I have eight ounces of wine, I'm drinking that wine. But you can cook your pasta in, in wine. I've done that many times before. It adds a really good flavor. All right, so let's give this just a quick, a quick nuke in the microwave. This will kind of melt that cheese a little bit. You can put the cheese right on top if you want to do it right on top. We're gonna to put this in here. You guys missed it. We made an egg, so Raiders, we made an egg, like an egg bite. We made, we've made, so what we started off with, hold that thought. We're gonna give this 30 seconds. We made a oatmeal in the rice cooker. We added some agave to that, some apples, a little bit of cinnamon, great protein. Um, and fiber breakfast. If you add more fiber to your diet, and I tell people that fiber is not just for old people. This is the fiber that, I, that we use. We use this every single day, three or four times a day. You can put it in your coffee, you can put it in your water, you can put it anywhere you want to have it. The reason why a lot of the elderly have to take fiber supplements is because they're taking a lot of medication, and the medication causes issues, so they have to take more fiber. I won't go into details on that. So let's do... Let's check to see how this is doing. Do we need more sauce in here? Because the pasta, my pasta was just a little bit al dente. This will finish cooking in this. Oh my God, this smells so good. <laughs> this smells so good. Okay, hang on. I missed, I missed some stuff over here. Oh my goodness gracious. Microwave. Okay, we talked about the sofa. Gordon Ramsay won't eat that pasta. He'll never eat anything that came out of a microwave. Yes, did you guys see the Gordon Ramsay cooking ramen? And Uncle, oh my gosh, what's his name? What's his name? He's the Asian guy who judges everybody's based on their cooking when they're doing their fried rice and everything. And he was horrified over what, what Gordon Ramsay was doing for ramen. He was like, no, no, no. Yeah, I don't, I don't really cook in a microwave. I do it mainly like to, maybe like to heat things up because I don't want to. 
you know, put something to a big pan, to have to wash that pan, to put it onto a plate. I just put it on a plate and heat it up and, and just actually do it that way. Wine pasta, yes. Wine pasta is amazing. Book, thank you so much for those biddies. I appreciate that. Uncle Roger, yes. Watch Uncle Roger. So I guess Gordon Ramsay did fried rice and Uncle Roger was so impressed with Gordon Ramsay's fried rice, he gave Gordon Ramsay the honorific of Uncle Gordon, which is like, what? That's huge. That, for Uncle Roger, that's huge. But then he watches him cook ramen. He's like, no. And even I have to admit, watching Gordon Ramsay cook the ramen and what he was describing of the ingredients, I was like, no, no. Even I was like horrified over that. How about fresh frozen? Cooking the food while it's still fresh and then freeze it so it stays fresh longer. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Let's put this into... I don't have any like fresh, fresh pasta, I mean fresh herbs, because I'm thinking as a, as a dorm room meal that we're not gonna have fresh herbs. Let's put that over there. Let's get this over here. And then we're also gonna dish up our, so this is gonna be our pot. Now this is enough for two people. Now is a college dorm room person or college kid probably gonna plate this up? No, he's not. I should have saved some of that cheese. I could have done some of the fresh cheese on the top. I am not going to put dried herbs. Dried herbs are not a topping, people, because they're going to be very dry when they hit the palate. Their flavor isn't going to release. You need to have, you need to let those hydrate up a little bit. Where'd my fork go? Are chefs close to the water saying they can't get fresh seafood? Yeah, I would eat that straight out of the Pyrex. That's, in all honesty, that's what I would have done too. So we have a nice, oops, let's get this out of here. Ooh, let's wipe all that. So this is just a simple pasta dish. Oops, there we go. A simple pasta dish that has 